Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm building a toolbox for the back of my truck. These things are pretty expensive if you buy them, but if you make it yourself, you can save a lot of money. I've been meaning to get this done for a very long time. Big thanks to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. EcoFlow is a leading energy company that has developed portable, renewable power station to keep you going, whether indoor, outdoor, or at your home. This unit has just over 2,100 watt hours of available power and has the ability to power up to 15 devices at once. I've already tested this and it can power nearly every household device, including a toaster, refrigerator, I've even used it on a washing machine and so many other things. And this comes with the extreme technology that makes it possible to recharge this fast. It plugs into an AC outlet and you can charge it from 0% to 100 in an hour and a half. That's almost on par with this. No matter where you go, as long as you're within the Wi-Fi range of the unit, you can connect to the Delta Max using the app. And when you connect to it, you can read all sorts of data, whether it's the power consumption or the battery level, whatever you need to see, it provides it. The front of the unit is mostly USB related and the back of the unit is 120 volt related. And that means you can power just about everything you need from this unit. My main need for this unit is having it as a backup during hurricane season. So for the rest of the time, I likely use it here in the back of the truck if I'm going places or I'm doing work at locations that don't have anything, but mostly I wanna use it to power up my tools and to charge batteries. One of the best things about this unit is you can fully charge it and sit it on the shelf for pretty much a whole year and it's ready to go as soon as you need it. While you can charge this unit with AC power, you can also use solar power to keep this unit powered up. So if you're on a job site or something or at the beach, probably a great addition to this unit. EcoFloor is running an incredible holiday sale right now using my link down in the video description. So if you're interested in this, you can find more information down below. Being that the bed of the truck has such awkward shape, Rather than to try and measure and then transfer the measurement over to the plywood, I decide I'll make all the mistakes on a sheet of cardboard. All I have is an idea in my head and I'm going from that. This is pretty much what I have in mind and it can be flipped for either side. I'm trying to figure out how much space I need between the toolbox and the side of the truck. Now I think I'm all set, so I'm gonna trace that cardboard onto the plywood. And this is where it begins. I'll be using a jigsaw to cut the lines. I was hoping to be conservative with the amount of plywood I'm using. So instead of using two sheets of plywood, I found a way to make one sheet of plywood work. I cut a piece of the same plywood to extend the panel that wasn't long enough. And to do so, I'll be using pocket hole screws. But in this case, you can also use dowels as well. I'll apply wood glue to this before attaching it because I want this to be as strong as possible. After joining the two pieces of plywood, I now have two panels, one for the top and one for the bottom. And for the next sequence of cuts, I'll make those over on the table saw. I'm assembling this upside down. Now this is on purpose because I don't want any hardware showing while the toolbox is in the upright position. Pocket hole screws is the fastest way to assemble this that I can think of. Aside from speed, the screws are concealed. I didn't apply any wood glue here just in case I have any hiccups along the way I can take things apart and make adjustments. I was hoping to maximize almost every inch this toolbox would be occupying. And that includes this little build out area here. Here are the parts laid out before I connect them. Without using any tape measure or square, let me show you how I came up with the angles. All you need is a straight piece of plywood longer than the intended location. While lining up the plywood to the edge, I'll draw a line straight out past the angle. Then I'll reposition the plywood and follow the next edge and trace out another line. Every line I drew out, I made sure it extend past the desired spot. Trace the line out on both sides of the plywood if it extends to the inside. Now you can see how I figured out the angle to cut. Whichever angles this give you, just trust it and roll with it. 
Now I'll continue to use this method until I figure out all the parts I need to cut. When you get to a spot like this, you can decide whether you want the part to extend from the inside or maybe you want to make that part as tiny as possible. Either way, you now know how I came up with all the parts to cut. With the parts cut to size, now I'll attach them. With that entire side connected, now I'll attach the inside panel. You may notice this panel has a two-tone look to it and that's because I joined two scrap pieces of plywood together. Anything to avoid cutting a new sheet. The plus side here is that it will be hidden. For this panel, I plan to countersink the holes and install screws. Now, I'll move the focus over to making the drawers. I built the drawers using half inch plywood. I was planning for rabbit joints on a drawer. After doing a few test cuts, I realized the plywood was chipping. This is not the greatest quality of plywood. It's mostly used for subfloors. With that in mind, I would do simple butt joints using wood glue and nails. My two options here are one inch nails and one and a half inch nails. I'm using 18 gauge nails and either one of these would work. I apply wood glue to the plywood and join the two parts together. While they are held, I'll shoot a few brad nails in. With the drawer frame assembled, I'll check it to make sure it's squared. You can do this with anything square or rectangle, simply measure diagonally in the X form. And if you have the same number, this lets you know that the frame is squared. If not, just give it a shift until you get the same number. In this case it is, so I'll apply wood glue without moving the box too much before I attach the bottom. Just like the corners, I shoot brad nails in the bottom to hold it in place. The first drawer is complete, so let's make a second one. And here you have it, two drawers coming up. The drawers I made are extra deep compared to a standard kitchen drawer. I came across these drawer slides which should work perfectly with the drawers. They're heavy duty slides and as you can see, they extend quite a bit. Let's get these things installed. First thing I need to think about is how deep I want the slides to be. The drawer handles I use, they're recessed, but the grip on the handle sort of sticks out. And I want to make sure that doesn't interfere with the tailgate. So I made a little stop to help me set the depth of the slides. Now I can secure the slides. And if you notice, I have a piece of plywood under the slides. This is so that I keep a consistent height for all the drawer slides. I'll get the rest of them installed using the same method. To attach the sliders to the drawer, I set the piece of plywood inside the opening, slide the drawer in, and screw the slides to the drawer. I'm able to get the first four screws in towards the front. Now I need to pull the drawer out and then add the other four in the back. Now I have these big drawers and lots of space, but it's probably not the most efficient way to use this. I'm gonna show you some quick, simple, and optional drawer dividers that functions a whole lot better. With it being a divider, it don't have to be boring, so I played with the look a bit until I got something I was okay with.
I want the dividers to be removable and toolless, so I'll make them slide into each other. To avoid making the channel too tight, I folded a sheet of paper to act as a spacer and that little bit of space is just enough for this piece to move freely. I'll take this divider panel and line it up to the back panel of the drawer and once I get this all sorted out, I'll simply just install the channels. Next I'll repeat this two more times and we'll have a working divider system. You can go from a full open space drawer to dividing it into two space and then three in a matter of seconds and tool free. I did a similar thing in a large drawer, but there's only one divider here. I could decide which slot is more convenient. The handles I want to use are recessed and they need to be routed in. So I'm going to show you how to make a simple router jig so you can route in these handles. I took the measurement of the back of the handle and transferring them to this piece of wood. Once I cut out that middle section, it would then be a router jig. Because I have to route in two handles, it's worth the extra effort to make a jig. Now I'll locate the draw panel, draw a line down the center so I can line up the jig to the draw panel on both of them. That would make it easy. To complete the jig, I added a piece of wood at the top. This way I can clamp it and also make sure they line up the same way on both drawer doors. To route this section out, I'll be using a flesh trim bit. The main thing here is to keep track of how deep you need to route. In a perfect row, you want this hole to be at the proper depth on the first try before removing the jig. So whatever it takes, be resourceful and measure the hole to make sure it's at the proper depth before removing the jig. Now I'll set the spacing for the drawer front, then I'll shoot a couple nails through the front to briefly hold this in place. Finally, I pull the drawer out and add a few screws from the inside. Now I like the handles and I think they look cool. Luckily I had screws on hand that could work with these because these handles came with no screws. Now I'm going to opt out of adding a lock, but if I were to add something, it would be one of these. I'd mount this latch in the center, drill a hole, then engage the lock to hold the drawer in position. At this point, I put the toolbox in the truck just so I can get a feel for it. It's not secured, it's just sitting. I feel pretty good about getting a few sheets of plywood in here. If there's ever a time I'll need the entire truck bed, I can simply pull this entire thing out in less than a minute. So far, I'm quite pleased with what I see. So I'm gonna take the router and clean up any overhanging edge. Then I'll sand the entire thing down, give it a slight round over, sand the edges again, and then I'll be on to painting. I won't paint the entire thing, but I'll paint enough of it so it feel like it belongs in a truck. My idea to hold this toolbox into place was to add this piece of 2x4. I need to drill a couple holes here so I can install some threaded nuts. I also want this to be tool free so I'll pair up the threaded nuts with knobs.
I cannot recall where I got these heavy duty brackets from, but they came in a package with something and I just held on to them. I drilled through the 2x4 and used a screw, a washer, and a nut to tie it all together. I would have likely used these brackets if I didn't have the black ones. This is meant to slide into the slot of the truck bed and then be attached to the side of the toolbox. The other side of the toolbox is shaped to fit in place, so on this side it's more like a wedge keeping it all together. This is firm enough to stay put, so one thing I don't have to worry about is this box shifting. All I have to do is paint that piece of wood and it'll fit right in. It came to my attention that adding light in here just makes total sense. This light is magnetic, but I'm not going to use the metal back that it came with. Instead, I'll make metal straps to hold it, this way they don't fall down accidentally. Finally, I'll secure the light with straps and screws. The lights come with a few features. You have to cycle through those and see which one you like. Right now I have it on motion during the day, but you can switch that feature off so it only operates at night. So I have this little opening here. I was planning to put a door on here, but I couldn't figure out how to properly put hinges on it to keep that consistent look. So I decided I'm gonna leave this open so I can put odd things in it, like my jumper cables or a hose or extension cord, things like that. So here I have a smaller door and then I have the bigger door on this side. This is based on how I feel like I wanna use it. So if you were to make something like this, you can just make it as custom as you want. On the door, I have these spring handles. They, they, they pull their self back in, so they're not just dangling. Right now, this isn't properly laid out how I would want to use it, but just to show you guys, here you can put odd things in it. You have three departments here, and if you want to take this apart, you can pull all these dividers out. And in this section, I have one divider in here so we can either move this here or keep it in the front. But if you want to add two, you can just add two in here. That's pretty simple to do. Obviously, I have a cover on the truck. This thing will be dry most of the time. But if you were to build one of these and you don't have a truck back, I would more likely say waterproof this and drill holes in the bottom just in case water get in it. It can come out. Being that I keep the back of the truck locked, I personally don't see a need to add a latch on here, but if you want, I would center it up with this lock and that's how I would install it. So over here, I have the EcoFlow unit and I think it's a good spot for it. All right, guys, so that is it for now. I totally enjoyed doing this build and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you liked the video, go ahead, smash a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, drop them down below. But in the meantime, if you ain't already, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you on the next one.